so I'm not an architect. <laughs> um, I studied architecture, but I was always more interested in the scale of the hand, the scale of the body, the scale of the interior. Um, this is the interior of my studio uh, called Ready Made Projects in Brooklyn and New York. Um, we have a small team, and uh, lately the team's been growing, which is great. And I can say that um, we're very much interested in making things. Um, it's pretty simple. We, uh, we have clients in a lot of different disciplines, um, primarily home furnishings, um, luxury packaging, um, and most recently, in the past five years, we've done a lot of collaborations with artisans in the developing world. Um, the work that's become most important to me, because our practice is changing, we're kind of developing this, what I consider to be a hybrid practice, um, the work that's become most important to me is the work that we're doing by hand uh, with people and having a stronger connection to the culture of what we're making and uh, how culture is connected to design, how design is connected to culture is really what we're interested in. Um, we've had the opportunity to work on all different scales, um, something as small as a fragrance bottle uh, to interiors. We do maybe one commercial interior a year for various private clients. Uh, but then, you know, we also have the opportunity to work industrially with some of the world's best uh, home uh, furnishings manufacturers um, to also doing things uh, on our own in the studio. We do a lot of full-scale prototypes, uh, a lot of experimentation with materials, um, and a lot of experimentation with uh, techniques. Um, we don't really start with a material, we start with an idea, and uh, I guess I named the studio Ready Made Projects because um, we were interested in how uh, the context changes everything. How an object that's initially perceived as art, for example, in the case of the ready-made, gets or initially perceived as a, a, a public uh, industrial design, in the case of a ready-made, gets shifted to the perception of art. Um, and it looks like I work alone here, but <laughs> I actually don't. Um, occasionally, um, I uh, entertain myself hanging out, making things, uh, standing on tables, etc. But um, mostly, we, <laughs> we, uh, it's a collaborative project. Um, everything we do is collaborative. We see every project as a collaboration between ourselves, our clients, and uh, the means of production. So I'm going to take you through a few case studies um, very personally um, and our relationship to those and the work that I've been doing. Um, this is uh, our work in fragrance packaging. This is, uh, these are prototypes for the CKNTU uh, packaging, uh, the primary package as it's called, the bottle. Um, we were uh, hired as the fifth designer on this project. Um, often in a case like this, uh, the budget, for example, is $90 million. And uh, they hire a number of designers that actually compete to uh, win uh, the project. Um, this is our bottle, the winning bottle. Um, I thought about how, in a lot of ways, the, the, the contemporary or the, the, the youth that buy CK, uh, the young people that are buying CK, for example, um, were described as technosexual and how the bottle, <laughs> which is hard to believe, but how the bottle itself uh, really should, in my opinion, if they're technosexual, the first generation to flirt through technology, let's say, the bottle itself should probably be perceived more as a product rather than a bottle. This is a bottle. Um, this is David Yerman, uh, another uh, fragrance package that we worked on. This is a collaboration with the artist David Yerman, uh, the jewelry designer. Um, this is actually a bottle inside of a bottle. Um, in order to uh, kind of produce two scales of luxury for this company, um, the initial bottle uh, is kind of jewel-like, and the second bottle was kind of uh, jewel encased in glass. Uh, this is my first fragrance packaging assignment um, for the, fra the uh, fashion brand Missoni. Uh, Missoni hadn't done a fragrance in about 17 years, um, and uh, they, we were kind of invited into this project because I'd been a consultant to Missoni for about two and a half years. On a flight back from Milan, I realized that uh, they were working on a fragrance and I pitched uh, this idea of covering a bottle in, in fabric, which seemed really obvious to me. 
Um, we have two patents now with Estee Lauder, who produces the, the fragrance, uh, the first fragrance bottle ever covered in fabric, and uh, the first fragrance bottle to have an original swatch of fabric on every bottle. Um, this is an installation I did for Missoni in uh, 2004. Um, sometimes we have the opportunity to, to design everything for a client, so we designed this 5,000 square foot installation during the Milan Furniture Fair for Missoni, which um, also gave us the opportunity to produce a new product for them. Um, the product we designed for them uh, were the Missoni Patchwork Vases. The vases, um, really the first product that I ever uh, designed and actually made by hand. Um, we did an installation of 60 vases for them during this exhibition. Um, you see them here. And I really perceive this as a recycling project. All of the vases uh, little known to Missoni, were found in thrift, short, thrift stores around New York, and all of the fabric is uh, cutoffs from the fashion collection. So we visited their factory. They basically said, go play. I took uh, bags and bags full of fabric, and we cut them and applied them to existing vases. Um, during the exhibition, no one was allowed to touch the vases, so people didn't know how we'd actually done it. It seemed very magical. What's interesting about this for me is I see... Um, uh, maybe I don't see Italy when I look at those vases. I see the origins of the influences of the company, um, so which led us into working in the developing world. In 2005, as a consultant to Aid to Artisans, um, working with uh, a small brand out of LA called Art Technica, uh, I did a project as part of their design with Conscience series called Tattoo. Um, it's a wire table that's handmade in South Africa uh, by artisans there. Um, they're working in a number of different places around the world in collaboration with our Aid to Artisans who work in 85 different countries, I believe. Um, this was an opportunity for me as a designer to go uh, and, and collaborate, essentially, with people that are always making things by hand. They kind of have an immediacy of making which is contagious and very exciting. And being a designer and architect, uh, also trained as an architect, raised on... Uh, you know, designing by computer, um, it was really a reawakening for us. Um, these are silicone and mosaic glass uh, bowls and vases. Um, they're actually soft and flexible to the touch. They were manufactured by a small group called uh, Mandela Mosaics, who at the time were making portraits of Nelson Mandela by mosaic tile. We created a proprietary process for them whereby which they could uh, make a bowl or a vase from an existing bowl or vase, um, a kind of reverse slip casting technique. Um, we also uh, did these tables uh, for Capellini. The vases and the bowls we designed back in 2006, but as part of our process, we're trying to build a bridge from uh, the developing world to my kind of first world clients. And uh, this was one of those examples. Capellini um, asked us to develop a collection. I'd already designed the bowls and vases. We kind of revisited that uh, for them. And we also did these uh, tables, a side table and a coffee table that are made from trash, uh, <laughs> recycled magazines that are shredded and applied to a paper form, which is actually stuffed with paper. So it's all paper. And it uses a non-toxic hardener. I'm trying to keep up with my slides here. Um, this is an exhibition I did for Moroso in April. Uh, 20 seconds is good. It's very exciting. Uh, the exhibition was called Mafrique. I was uh, invited by Moroso um, back in... I guess January or February, while I was speaking at the Design and Dab in South Africa, uh, I got a call. They said, let's do this exhibition together. We flew to Senegal, uh, me and my uh, videographer, photographer. Um, I'm working on a documentary in the developing world of this, this work that I'm doing. Um, we picked fabrics from uh, the markets, uh, Senegalese wax uh, fabric and Mali uh, wax fabric. And uh, we did patchwork onto existing Moroso collections and we were also invited to do uh, this collection. It was an outdoor furniture collection in hand-woven uh, polyethylene over a steel frame. The steel frame is actually welded in uh, a little house, a small factory, you could say. Um, and all of the polyethylene is, is woven in a house of multiple artisans on the outskirts of uh, Dakar. So it, it's, it's really been interesting for me going through this process of, of kind of starting my career in Europe really wanting to work with uh, the industrial f uh, companies of the world, like uh, we work with B&B Italia, for example, we work with Boffi, for example, but then ending up in a place like this where 
all of a sudden I'm looking at the combination of what can be made by hand, what can be made in a place like Africa, and what can be sold by a company like Moroso. Um, I've never really been interested in, quote unquote, saving the planet. We've definitely been interested in uh, saving people. So the, what I get out of this work is, is really um, the, the ability to collaborate with people in a totally different cultural climate um, and see design have a kind of economic transformation for them. Uh, the tattoo project that we did, for example, um, the artisan Willard uh, went from working on a dirt floor to working in his own factory and actually trained 50 people in his community to make these tables um, that we designed. Uh, this is a more recent project, sort of related, but uh, it's called the hybrid project. And, and as we've been thinking about how our practice is changing, I've also been thinking about how maybe all of our practices are changing. Maybe how um, the idea of authorship is fading and maybe how uh, the notion that, you know, the, the kind of singular auteur working alone in the studio is, is really not what it's about today. And me signing my name on a piece of furniture in Italy doesn't really make sense to me. So um, these are all, this is a self-generated project, self-initiated project. These are all um, prototypes, my son's inflatable dinosaur, an old Eames chair, uh, my lucky cat from my first studio in Chinatown, all kind of collage together to create a physical representation of this notion of hybrid. Um, I believe we're all becoming hybrids. Uh, I think the whole world is becoming more hybrid as we mix cultures, etc. But then the way we work is also becoming more hybrid. Um, networked systems, etc. allow all of us to work in a lot of different ways. And I actually benefit greatly by collaborating with uh, my graphic designer friends, my photographer friends, um, the artisans I work with, uh, the CEOs that just want to talk ideas. I mean, and, and it's, it's very exciting. When you look up the word hybrid in the dictionary, you, you come upon mongrel and of uncertain origin and uh, of mix this and mix that. And that used to be a negative thing. And I think today um, it's become a positive thing. Hey, hybrid. Uh, what does that say? Hey, hey half-breed, what are you looking at? So this kind of thing, I think, is, is really um, becoming more, more important to the way that we're working. And, and also the, the idea of mining your own creativity is, is also very interesting in terms of, I think, a future gesture for design. We don't always have to look to what everyone else is doing, for example. Um, but we can look to what we're doing and what our goals are and, and kind of why we're doing what we're doing. So these images you're seeing now will become a limited edition poster set um, as part of a, a new project that we're doing um, called New Ready Made Products. Um, I'm just about to launch my own brand uh, for the first time. I've realized that uh, I'm really well known in America, but I mean in Europe, excuse me, <laughs> in America, um, a lot lesser known. And, and it's not about me being known in my identity, but it's about um, really getting the ideas out there. So we're launching a website called New Ready Made Products, which will sell all of the products that we make by hand, um, including things like uh, the tape chair, which we did for the Cologne Furniture Fair, um, an old butterfly chair frame, two rolls of packing tape. You can make your own chair in a half an hour, for example. Uh, things like uh, the rope vases, which is a new project we're developing um, using technical climbing rope and, and uh, recycled vases. Um, things like the, uh, the tabarets that are made in Peru, uh, basket lamps made in Senegal. So through my travels and through this documentary I'm working on called Made on Earth, I've uh, had the opportunity to connect to a lot of different production resources and, and it's I think about time I did something with all of that. <laughs> and I'm looking for ways to bring more attention to those projects and, and bring more funding to the artisans that are making them. And not everything will be made in Africa, obviously, but um, it's, it's a way for us to, uh, to at least uh, utilize um, these fabricators because I think you know, I'm having difficulty with the big companies that are struggling right now. So we got to do it ourselves. Uh, this is the favorites page, for example, um, after you've browsed the website and uh, you've gone through, you could collect your favorites. And am I out of time? Almost. So uh, <laughs> I'd love to answer questions, but I don't have time to. But a dialogue, I think, is what